Good morning, everybody, and uh, a blessed Holy Thursday uh, to you. We've been um, talking about the wisdom of the cross. We've been talking about why it was in God's plan that his beloved son, Jesus, would, uh, would die on the cross for us. And we've seen a, a bunch of reasons, right? We've seen that Jesus' death uh, pays the price for our sins. We've seen that his death reveals to us the true nature of sin. Um, and today I want to talk about how his death gives meaning to our suffering. It, in fact, transforms the meaning of our suffering. Um, and and this, this is important on a, just like a basic human experiential level, right? Um, when someone is suffering, um, and it is, you know, asking the, the hardest questions, you know, why is this happening to me, right? What they're, they're, they're not looking for, you know, a theological discourse on the, the consequences of original sin. No, they're not necessarily even looking for, at least at first, um, you know, reassurance that it will, it will be better in heaven. Uh, no, I, I think what you need in that moment is that that abiding knowledge that yeah God knows what you're going through that's that's really our, our source of hope um, our, our, our most immediate source of hope in those moments um, and God knows because he's experienced it he has gone through terrible suffering um, in fact the worst kind of suffering we'll, we'll talk about why that is and even to the point of death. You know, it's interesting, um, you know, our, our tradition tells us that, and you know, this is true, this is just basic theological logic, right? That, in fact, a, a single drop of Jesus' blood would have been sufficient to pay the price for our sins, because that blood is of infinite value. Um, you know, if he... A paper cut would have been enough. Uh, but God, God still chose to descend to the depths, right? To take on the, the full measure of our, you know, miserable condition uh, by dying on the cross for us. And, and, and this, this gives an answer, right? Not just philosophically, but experientially. To, you know, the most difficult question in the world, right? Why is there suffering? And, you know, this is, this is a question that's, you know, it's not always treated with proper reverence, right? It's, it's almost, you know, kind of like thrown at religious believers a lot. Like, oh yeah, well, if you believe, if your God is so good, you believe in an all-powerful, all-good God, you know, why is there suffering in the world? It's a it's presented as though it's just a, a challenge for us who believe in a, a good and loving God. Um, but actually, you know, the problem of suffering is a, e even philosophically, is a, is a problem for everyone. Uh, because it, what it challenges us to make sense of is existence at all. Like, do, does the cosmos make sense? Is there a good and just order to two things. Um, and we need an answer to that question. Everyone needs an answer to that question. Uh, because you need some way of making sense of your life, uh, really just to get out of bed in the morning. Um, so all of us have our kind of operational answer to the question of suffering. And some, some of these answers are pretty bad. Uh, you know, we can, our answer can be that, well, I'm suffering because those people over there are against me. And, and they're, they're, the, they're the reason for everything that's wrong in the world. Um, that is a kind of answer, right? That helps us make sense of our suffering. This is why, 
I mean, finding a, a scapegoat is so, such a sort of a psych, psychologically powerful instinct. Um, it's not ultimately a, a helpful answer or a worthwhile answer, but it's an answer. Um, you know, we, we, there, there have been bigger answers in the course of human history. Um, you know, uh, a, a big one in recent centuries is actually um, Marxism, communism. Uh, and the, 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 the power of, of Karl Marx's ideas, you know, was not foremost as a, an economic theory or a political program. You know, the, the, the force behind him was that it was almost, they were almost like a religious creed. You know, it's an interpretation of present suffering, you know, the, the, the miserable condition of, uh, of workers at his time. Um, in light of a future glory, right? You know, that eventually there would be this worker's paradise and you know, capitalism would fall, fall away. That's the, it's kind of like, that's a religious kind of answer to the problem of suffering. Doesn't work, but you can see that why people would latch on to something like that. We need an answer. Um, you know, there some people you know, try to bite the bullet on this question. Well, you know, why is there suffering in the world? Well, it's just the world is absurd. Um, you know, and I, I embrace the absurdity of it. Um, these were, you know, a lot of thinkers associated with uh, the school of uh, existentialism. Um, so they try to bite the bullet and just say, yep, world is absurd, whatever. Um, but they act, they can't quite pull it off because they always come back to justifying their own actions. Okay, like, well, if the world is absurd, well, why am, am I writing this book right now? Well, because I think it's important to embrace the, the, the absurdity and to um, kind of exert myself in, in, in the face of it and create my own meaning. Um, but once you give that answer, guess what? You've, you've stopped embracing the absurdity. Now all of a sudden you're trying to find order and purpose in the midst of it. So, so we all need an answer to the question of suffering. But only one answer satisfies. And that's the answer that God himself gives when his beloved son died on the cross. And what, we, what we, we, we learn from the cross is that if, if our incarnate God himself suffered and died out of love for us, then our suffering can be something that brings us into union with him. Even if like physically, emotionally, it's, it's the same suffering all of a sudden it, it, it's, it's transformed in its inner nature from something that leads us to despair to something that brings us into the greatest love possible. And of course we know by Jesus' resurrection that that's a love that's in fact even stronger than death. And it's also... It's also a love that increases our capacity to suffer with others. Um, and this is a point that was made very powerfully, you know, by um, Pope Benedict XVI. You know, one of the most beautiful meditations on Christian suffering is um, the, the one that he writes in this, you know, very short, very beautiful uh, letter he wrote as Pope called um, Saved in Hope, Spe Salvi. Um, I, I commend it to your reading. Um, you could read it in an hour or two. Uh, but, you know, right at the end, you know, paragraph 35, 36 or so, he has just this, you know, a couple pages of just beautifully unpacking the mystery of suffering. And it's, it's really worth your time. And he talks about how, I mean, just how much suffering is caused by our attempts to avoid suffering. And how it's only in Jesus Christ that um, the meaning of, of suffering is transformed and we can receive the strength to suffer with others as they 
as they need us to. But now, you know, there, there's another question here, too. And I, I want to kind of go deep into this mystery as well. Um, we might ask, you know, well, okay, does, yeah, Jesus suffered, he died. But does he understand my suffering? Um, and the answer is yes, he, he does. And in fact, his suffering was the deepest and most painful and most perfect suffering that has ever been suffered. Um, the, uh, in the Old Testament, the Lamentations of Jeremiah, there, there, there's this one verse of the prophet that um, the church has always, always understood to be Jesus himself, you know, kind of speaking through the prophet. You know, Lamentations chapter 1, verse 12, you know, Behold and see if there's any sorrow like my sorrow. Uh, those are Jesus' words. And, and we can really see in what he went through, really the, the perfection of suffering. You know, they're all, and, and it's not just its physical intensity, right? He, he was indeed tortured to death. Crucifixion was, it was a, a terrible, terrible torture. And on top of that, he was, he was betrayed he, by his one of his closest friends. He was denied by another one of his closest friends. He was rejected by his own people. So you have all of these kinds of suffering that we might be able to identify with at, at various points in our lives. Uh, but that's not what makes his suffering so perfect. Um, what makes it so perfect is the perfect love that's behind it. Uh, and that's it increased the anguish to, to something that we can't even imagine. I mean, it would be the difference, you know, even think, think about the rejection that he faced. Um, rejection is the more, more painful, the more it's a rejection of, of, a, of a truer and a more intense love, right? When, uh, you know, when my grocery store wants to sell me a, a box of cereal and I don't want to buy a box of cereal. Like the, the grocer doesn't take that personally, right? He doesn't go home and cry. Um, because he's not, I mean, he, he might like me, but he's not all that invested in that specific exchange. Um, but if, you know, we're a, if a child were to spurn the love of a parent, right, that would be, that would be suffering on a, on an intense level because of the, you know, that the parent has given the child, well, everything and, and is, you know, has, has given the child life. And so a rejection of that gift is a, is a terrible kind of thing. Well, no one could possibly love us more than our God. So when we rejected his offer of love by putting him to death on the cross, um, the entire eternal perfect love of God was behind that suffering. Uh, so yeah, he suffered perfectly and he suffered for us and his suffering can take to itself everything that we're going through if we're willing to go through it with him. So yes, God knows. God knows what we're going through. And this should, this, should, this should give us great hope. And it's definitely one of the reasons that it was in his wisdom to make that perfect sacrifice on the cross.